Ostkreuz, June 21st, 1991. This is a city of phantoms. During the DDR days, the city maps contained only a phantom grayed out center representing the Forbidden West. This was designed to leave the Easterner with no clue of what to expect on the other side of the wall. Today the wall itself has become the phantom, along with the procession of S-Bahn station names, which have been banished to become non-places. Dimitrov Strauss, Marx Engels Platz, Lenin Allee, Karl Maron Strauss, Bruno Leuschner Strauss, and Otto Winzer Strauss. These are the fallen victims of cultural realignment. In Berlin, the emotional landscape is hidden, like terrain under a new coat of snow. People speak of a Maori im Kopf, a wall in the mind, an intangible presence shouldered by 3.5 million inhabitants. Similarly, the outlines of the recent past are blanketed over. On the surface, there remains a metallic calm which denies the turbulent past. The edges are still there, but they are just below the surface, just under what one can see. Neon signs newly placed along the Karl Liebknechtstrasse barely cover the faded signage of their predecessor. Most buildings bear a palimpsest of the city's earlier tracings. Only someone who knows the nature of the city's scars could perceive the tenderness that was present in those places. Bahnhof, July 10, 1991. There are train tracks that parallel the Kiefholtstrasse near Treptower Park. These crossed a trestle bridge to reach the western bank of the Landwehr Canal, and at various, more congenial times, these tracks transported coal between the two Berlins. The landscape there was desolate and barren. From the bridge, one could observe a row of steel lampposts which once illuminated the now phantom wall. Here one was a short distance from the vast dusty lot which marked the site of the Gorlitzer Bahnhof. The place was haunted by the remains of a tiled pedestrian corridor once interior to the now vanished structure of the rail station. The residents of this neighborhood would run to this spot and huddle along the narrow passageway during the frequent Allied bombing of the city at the end of the war. Now the decapitated tunnel lies like an open wound across the face of this stretch of land. Soon it too will be covered by one of Berlin's many layers. Espan Alexanderplatz, July 17, 1991. The S-Bahn station at Alexanderplatz, the East's beloved Alex, had an otherworldly feel at night. I remember an earlier visit here, when the city was still divided. 
It was a harsh place. This rail station, unlike any other I have known, was at that time a passageway between two distinct hostile countries. At the lowest level it belonged to the West. In the center concourse of Alex, a steel barricade created an impregnable wall to the East. This was a guarded checkpoint, ominous and heavily fortified. Walking through this place even today is like passing into a cauldron of time. Alexanderplatz was a place caught in a social vortex between warring ideologies. Standing there accelerates one to a strange present, pulled from an even more inexplicable past. In my mind I imagined I could reconstruct Berlin's past by observing the trains of this city. There was, not far from here, a station known as the Palace of Tears, near the once named Marx Engels Platz. Here DDR citizens, shunned by their comrades, passed into exile through the subway of the West. Further on, passing into the western half of the city, were the ruined tracks of the Anhalter Bahnhof, choked with a 50-year growth of white birch trees. Zoo, January 24, 1999. Today, at the dawn of the coming millennium, these marks are gone, lost to a historic moment. Berlin struggles to become a whole city, to be like any other city. Building cranes punctuate the landscape now. The Potsdamer Platz has germinated steel towers, monuments to the power of commerce. The pace of change here is swift. The city vibrates, never tranquil. This is the character of this place, so it seems, perhaps till the end of the world. That is Berlin. Immer unruhig.